HIV. The VA statement says in part the dentist in question, although still employed by the VA, is no longer providing direct patient care. The center's director says federal rules prohibit it from identifying the dentist in question. The VA says it is setting up procedures to conduct medical tests of those patients treated. The patients and their family members will also be offered counseling. Now, four dentists regularly work at this clinic. Three are permanent employees and one is temporary. The clinic is a satellite for the main VA hospital in Miami. We understand the VA is now checking appointment logs to notify all patients of the HIV-infected dentist. Tragically, this is not the first case of a dentist testing HIV positive. At 6 o'clock, we'll look at some of those other cases and see how they compare with this one. Kelly? So, Beverly, if some of these doctor, if some of these patients of the doctor have not yet been notified, but they know they are going to a dentist at the VA, will they be able to call the hospital and get identification, or will they not give that information out? It's very likely not because of the Privacy Act. As we understand, they'll be notifying the patients in question once they can confirm that they are patients of the infected dentist. All right, Beverly, thanks very much. Bob? Another major story breaking tonight. The Lost Squadron is lost again. Those five Navy planes found off South Florida's coast turning out not to be the remains of Flight 19, which disappeared 46 years ago. Channel 4's Ari Adzer has the sobering details. It was such a tantalizing discovery, five planes on the ocean floor, that everyone, especially the people who found them, wanted to believe these were the aircraft of Flight 19. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the position we're in, the unenviable position of telling you that we're now quite certain that the five aircraft we found are not those of Flight 19, but in fact a second group of five Avengers. Which leaves the fate of Flight 19 up in the air. On December 5, 1945, the five Navy Avengers took off from Fort Lauderdale and were never seen again. One pilot who didn't join that doomed training flight told us weeks ago this discovery was found too close to the coast, only 10 miles out to be Flight 19. They're from another source. They're not from Flight 19. No, because we tracked them out. Their radio faded away. The ocean explorers figured this wasn't Flight 19 when they shot this new video just released today and noticed tail numbers like FT-87, which don't match the planes in the Lost Squadron. But it's easy to understand their initial optimism. The coincidences were startling. The explorers found five Navy Avengers sitting on the bottom, and one of them even had a number 28 on it, corresponding to one of the planes in the missing squadron. But these Avengers turned out to be older models. The Navy doesn't yet know why the five planes are resting together on the bottom, Historians think there may have been a bombing target in the area and the planes went down in separate accidents over the years, but they're not sure. There's an extreme irony in that. And so for those that really want to weave a mystery, instead of one group of five Avengers down in the Bermuda Triangle, we're now giving you two, which can only be a good thing if you like that kind of stuff. <laughs> the Bermuda Triangle, it seems, doesn't give up its secrets that easily. In Miami Beach, our Riyadh's are Channel 4 News. Well, in one sense, the excitement over last month's find has been dashed, but in another sense, another mystery has been born. Joining us live now from Fort Lauderdale, Alan McElhaney, McElhaney a naval historian. Thanks for joining us tonight, Mr. McElhaney. Oh, you're welcome. When you first heard of the discovery of these five planes off Fort Lauderdale, was there much doubt in your mind that the Lost Squadron had been found? Yes, I did doubt that this was the actual flight of the Flight 19 because of the radio signals being so weak. So I... I just couldn't believe it myself. Well, apparently the, the planes that were found were of a slightly older vintage than that of the Lost Squadron. But if they're not the Lost Squadron, what the heck are they? Well, we lost a, quite a few planes off the coast. I personally saw one go down during World War, uh, World War II, right off the coast, uh, right off the jetties here. And uh, the pilot and the air crewman got out on the wing and were picked up by a torpedo retriever. But, but what are the odds of five planes going down so very close together? Well, I think there's about eight planes in that area that went down, and uh, seven of them were ditchings, uh, to my recollection, from what information I can find out up to date. Uh, so I'm not surprised that there aren't a lot more planes out there. We lost a lot of Navy planes all up and down the coast, so uh, I wasn't surprised to hear that there were that many planes in one area there. All right, thank you, Alan McElhaney, for joining us live tonight. We'll have much more on the continuing mystery of the Lost Squadron coming up on the Channel 4 News at 6, including an interview with a Navy pilot scheduled to fly that fateful mission.
A president setting bone marrow transplant denied a California couple conceiving a baby to act as a donor to save the life of their 19-year-old daughter with leukemia. As Catherine Couric tells us, the operation is not without controversy. 18-year-old Anissa Ayala was diagnosed three years ago with chronic myelogenous leukemia. Her parents were told she had three to five years to live. How pretty Only a bone marrow transplant could save her. I can't get on with my life without this being over. I know I have it. I know something's going to have to happen. So with time running out and no matching donor to be found, the Ayalas decided to have a baby to save their daughter. They had a one in four chance of conceiving a match. Before 44-year-old Mary Ayala could get pregnant, her husband Abe had to have his vasectomy reversed. Five months later, Mary was pregnant, and last April, Marissa was born, healthy, and a perfect match for her sister. She's our miracle. Even though there was a reason behind her being born, it's a great reason to me. It's a wonderful reason, and what better reason for you to be born? Looking back, they say the hardest part of this whole ordeal was the search for a donor for Anissa. That was harder than making the decision to have a no. baby. You know, and they told us that the chances were one in 20,000 to find a non-related donor. It was like... And, and all there was was 17,000 in the registry. In the registry at the time. So we already had struck out. And even now, to think that there's 300,000 names in the donor registry and not one matches Anissa yet. Not one. Maybe Anissa wouldn't be with us you know, next year, but she will now. <laughs> she has to be to help take care of Marissa. <laughs> this is amazing. I can't believe that she's really actually gonna give this to me. I would just like to tell her thanks for everything. I mean, not only for her bone marrow, but for what a great sister she is. I love her so much, and if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here. Katie tells us the transplant went well and both patients are in the recovery room. Another youngster recovering from surgery tonight, Britain's Prince William, the eight-year-old son of Prince Charles and Princess Diana, was hit in the head by a schoolmate swinging a golf club. The boy, who is second in line to the British throne, had to undergo surgery for a fractured skull. The blow so hard it caused a small dent over his eye. But doctors say he'll be fine. Equally good news for President Bush. Doctors say the president's health is continuing to improve despite a thyroid condition. At a White House news conference, Mr. Bush told reporters he's even jogging again, running half a mile and walking two while vacationing in Kennebunkport last week. The president likely to need that strength for the battle over a civil rights bill being debated by the House tonight. It's designed to prevent job discrimination, but Mr. Bush says the bill amounts to hiring quotas, and he vows to veto it against the wishes of most minority leaders. A man accused of sending death through the mail on trial tonight, the Georgia man, Walter Moody, charged with mailing pipe bombs that killed a circuit court judge and a civil rights attorney in 1989. Opening arguments began this morning. The trial expected to last three weeks. Authorities investigating a chopper crash off Hollywood are studying videotape broadcast exclusively on Channel 4. The National Transportation Safety Board asking for a copy of the tape, which was shot by a diver checking out his underwater camcorder. Now that diver getting pictures of the chopper just after its pilot lost control. All aboard escaped before the craft sank into the sea. The sea yielding another 31 Cuban refugees. The Coast Guard spotting two of the freedom seekers in a homemade raft about 120 miles south of Miami late last night. The rest late today. They were rescued and brought to South Florida. Senator Connie Mack says we need to be rescued from a possible disaster in the making in Cuba, a nuclear power plant under construction there. Mack asking President Bush to put pressure on the Soviet Union to stop helping build that plant. The Cuban defectors insist the plant is unsafe. The quality control or the Galatech quality la guarantee in, la construcción de la in, de in the construction of the electronuclear no plant, al proyecto que esté bien hecho, que esté mal hecho. notwithstanding the fact that the project has been uh, done properly Pero or done improperly, práctica, but in, práctica, in, 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 in practice, in the construction, in, montaje, in the installation, se están violando there las are normas violations being committed of the standards de of uh, uh, safety, safety and quality control. A special meeting to discuss the threat underway in Orlando. We'll take you there live at 6.
The Broward School Board at this hour is dis discussing a new dress code for students. The plan would ban some of South Florida's trendiest threads. Under it, students wouldn't be allowed to wear leggings unless covered by a shirt that reached to mid-thigh. Boxer shorts would also be banned along with lacy tights. Students complain it's an invasion of their rights. Well, despite complaints, two cable companies are still trying to tune in on the Encore movie channel. Our help center learned they have a new plan. And troubleshooter Jack Atherton's in our Miami newsroom with details. Jack. Bob, the state's reaction to this is nothing doing. And to understand why, you got to compare the old plan to the new one. Under Storer and TCI's original negative option plan, a subscriber automatically would have paid from $12 to nearly $60 a year for the new Encore movie channel unless that customer first contacted the cable companies to refuse service. What's the basis for the uh, stay? But today's Circuit Judge LeVon Ward stood by his ruling that the negative option plan is unfair. Storer is appealing that order. Meanwhile, though, this afternoon, Storer and TCI announced a nationwide change of plan. Under this new one, customers would not have to contact the companies, but you would have to deduct a dollar from your bill to show you don't want Encore. By simply paying the bottom line amount, you would be accepting service. This eliminates any possibility of confusion or unfairness to the subscriber and the attorney general should just drop this whole thing and got, get on with more important business. But the attorney general has no intention of doing that because he says the new plan still misleads customers. Until they can start charging someone, the person must say, yes, I want that. What they're attempting to do is pick the pocket of the public. Now, the attorney general says he would have no problem with a cable bill that had a box somewhere like this that customers could just check off to show that they knew what it was that they were paying for. But uh, the cable companies don't like that positive option. Back to you. All right, thanks, Jack. Miami Beach announces a new hurricane evacuation plan. We'll show you how it could save your life. Thousands of lives threatened by a monstrous volcano spewing lava and flames. South Florida's trying to bite back against one of the worst mosquito invasions ever. And coming up at 5.30, it's going to be slow going for voters on the Intracoastal. We'll show you why on the Channel 4 News. The meeting went fine. What's that? She did. Really? Yes, I wish I could have been there too. Not till late. For pictures too important to wait, there's Eckerd Express Photo. So, what do you say we get up early tomorrow and go for a walk? Life doesn't stop when the sun goes down, which is why with a Chase Manhattan credit card, you can call us to request a change in your credit limit or get information about your balance. Anytime, day or night, we're flexible. Because after nearly 200 years, we've learned never to leave our customers in the dark. Chase, profit from the experience. Our volunteer of the year is Doris Craig. It's terrific how Depend changes people's lives. And there's a terrific change in Depend Elastic Leg Undergarments. It's called Absorb Lock, a unique leakage protection system that locks in 25% more. It'll do wonders for your confidence and get you back into life. Thank you so much. Get back into life with Depend. With Absorb Lock Protection. Before you buy your next lamp or light fixture, come to South Dade Lighting, where you'll find all the latest innovations and designs. Create magical effects and illusions in our nighttime simulation room. Add warmth, charm, and beauty to your home with our large selection of unique accessories. And South Dade Lighting's friendly, professional salespeople will help you with all of your lighting needs. South Dade Lighting, state-of-the-art showroom, 13006 Southwest 87th Avenue. Strong character. The product of Learnbrow for over 600 years. Brewed with great effort into every bottle, can, and keg that bears the crest of the lion. 
Lohenbrau Special, Lohenbrau Dark and Lohenbrau Light. One family of beers, one strong character. Oh, look at this one. <laughs> so your mother dressed you in short pants your first day of school? Yeah, with those little beanies with the propeller on top. I was adorable. Well, it takes a lot more to prepare your kid for school these days. Yeah, and you have to start a long time before the first day. Play games with your kid. Mm, spelling games, counting games. Read to your kid. Count the stars. Anything that makes learning fun. Because the more you know about preparing your kid to learn... The more your kid will learn. Bet you had cute knees. Still do. breast implants to give her porno career a rise. A Current Affair, weekdays at 7, following NBC Nightly News, only on Channel 4. What's the secret of success behind the number one foreign fashion magazine in the U.S.? The inside story of Elle's cover girls on Entertainment Tonight. Weeknights at 7.30 on Channel 4. From your 24-hour news source, Channel 4 News continues. Updating some of the top stories on the Channel 4 News tonight, researchers announced five planes found off Fort Lauderdale are not the Navy's lost squadron after all. The White House losing Attorney General Dick Thornburg, who's resigning to run for the U.S. Senate. And a Broward jury wants to send a career criminal to the electric chair. Details coming up at 5.30. Japan's Mount Unzen volcano still spewing deadly lava. 32 people now killed by its red-hot rock. The ferocious mountain belching fine ash and fire in the first eruption there in almost 30 years. 31 people are still missing, apparently ignoring warnings to leave their homes. Many others are injured, burned by the lava and fiery ash, while hundreds of survivors are waiting to see if their homes were swallowed by the eruption. Most are now living in evacuation centers. An evacuation plan revealed today from Miami Beach in case of a hurricane. But Channel 4's Ed O'Dell says beach officials admit they still have a major problem. Miami Beach has a plan including buses and evacuation routes across causeways to move people out. Yet officials are worried. Nine out of ten people surveyed say they will ignore an order to evacuate the beach and choose to ride out a major storm. It really does scare me. Everybody wants to believe it'll happen up the coast or, or down in the Keys, and it won't affect us. You can always, you know, pray for the best, but you should prepare for the worst. So people need to have a hurricane plan for a major hurricane. Mayfield brought pictures of Hugo's destruction in South Carolina to drive home a point to a hurricane evacuation committee meeting on Miami Beach. I think we have uh, bigger problems here than they did up there. The primary difference is congestion, numerous high-rises, and the elderly population trying to get out on a handful of bridges. Before an evacuation is ordered, the experts advise, know where you're going, how you will get there, and then get out fast. The most important thing is to make those people aware that they have not gone through a hurricane, that they're not the type of thing to have parties for, that they're not the type of, of, of event to, to, to shrug off. Wait too long and evacuation routes like MacArthur, Venetia, or Julia Tuttle Causeways could be congested or even underwater. And being forced to or choosing to survive a major storm is one thing. Surviving the aftermath is another. With the electric out for, for two or three weeks, it would be very traumatic on, on elderly people having to go up and down the stairs. They may not have water service. They... And without telephones, even medical services will be delayed. Beach officials argue that an evacuation plan is worthless if no one puts it to use. In Miami Beach, Ed O'Dell, Channel 4 News. I don't know what the high temperature was today, but I was out there and it felt like uh, 98. Well, we've got some thunderstorms around, so that means humidity's starting to come up, so it's really getting sticky out there. I'll say. We were 95 yesterday. We should be at 86 for this time of year. So that, that far ahead. That far ahead, so things are cooking. Let's go ahead and go outside right now. We'll take a look and show you what's going on. 94, Bob. There you go. The feels like temperature, 102. Humidity only at 44%, but it will be coming up. Winds out of the south at 14 only a trace of rain in the rain gauge so far today. Speaking of thunderstorms, first stop outside tonight. Clearview radar coming to us out of Palm Beach tonight. You can see these now moving inland. We're starting to see some showers start to move in to the north now. And with these, we're starting to see them fire up. We've got more here through the middle keys around Big Pine Key and Marathon. If you're down in the keys right now, there is a marine advisory up until 6 o'clock for water spouts and also some more up near Vero Beach. This is going to be the pattern we're going to stay in as far as the forecast goes for the next four to five days. Let's go ahead and take a look outside. We'll show you the southeast loop. 
to put this in motion, first thing you're going to notice is this bright white cluster here that just continues to fire up. A little bit of an area of low pressure just sitting there in the Gulf. But for us, we're starting to see more fire up. There were some ones earlier this morning. And once again, south of Jacksonville, around Gainesville and Ocala, they're really starting to get pounded again. Same pattern they've been in. We just can't seem to shake this for right now. Beckley, West Virginia, Elkins, West, West Virginia, actually at 68 degrees right now. Definitely a cool down for them. Raleigh, 85, 96 in Tallahassee, Atlanta and Charleston, a pair of 91s. Nassau, 81 degrees. Little Rock, 93. And we've got Topeka in at 87. Now up on these coasts, the good news is the heat wave, at least for a couple of days, has taken a, a break. New York, Philadelphia, Washington, everybody last week near 100, finally getting back down to normal seasonal temperatures. And even a little bit cooler up near Caribou, 63, Montreal, 63 as well. 75 in Philadelphia, Washington, 79 degrees, 77 in Richmond, Cleveland, a little cool today, some rain up there, 67. We got a thunderstorm, we got actually a tornado warning in effect right now for portions of Nebraska. It's a little cell right in through there. We're getting some pretty good thunderstorms right now through South Dakota. More reaching into Minnesota. That's keeping temperatures cooled down. 67 degrees in Minneapolis. Des Moines 70, 85 in Kansas City. Albuquerque 85. Phoenix 100. A little cool out in L.A. 64 degrees and 71 in Billings. As far as the forecasts go for us, for the boaters tomorrow, winds out of the west to southwest at 15 to 20. Seas running 2 to 6 feet. Now, two feet near shore as you get out into the Gulf Stream, six feet. The bay water's a moderate shot. The surf temperature, 82 degrees. For tonight, some passing showers. Even a couple of thunderstorms in there. Look for a low of 75. And tomorrow, more sunshine expected. But still, we're going to play with these thunderstorms. A high of 91 degrees. And your four more days, right through the period, warm and muggy, 90, 89, 89, and 91. And Saturday and Sunday, maybe a few more thunderstorms than we've seen so far. Bob? Thanks, Brian. Those uh, south and west winds making it very hard for Dade and Broward Health Departments to fight the mosquito invasion. The bugs they kill are immediately replaced by new ones. And while this species might not be dangerous to humans, they spread heartworm in dogs. Authorities urge you to keep your pets inside and make sure its vaccinations are up to date. We'll have much more on the mosquito invasion coming up at 6. Still ahead on this program, big changes could be on tap for beer and soft drink fans. And it's enough to make you growl with delight. Piano playing pooches. Next on the Channel 4 News. Yes, it's a good day for singing a song. And it's a good day for moving along. Yes, it's a good day. How could anything be wrong? A good day from morning till night. It only takes an instant to turn your day around. Play the new instant game from the Florida Lottery. Million dollar deal. You could win $10,000 or a million in cash. Because it's a good day from morning till night. A good day from morning till night. How KFC introduces a whole new kind of fried chicken. New light and crispy. Give me no skin, give it all taste. New light and crispy from KFC. No skin, so it's light. All taste because it's marinated with 11 herbs and spices. Nobody's cooking like KFC. Drop into KFC right now, and you can feed a lot of people for a little money. Get 12 pieces of delicious new light and crispy chicken for just $9.99 plus tax. Slide by for summer fun at Atlantis, the water kingdom. Come on out and make a big splash at Atlantis now. Down the slide, we pour on the fun. Save on admission with coupons at Amico, and Atlantis gives 50 cents to Miami Children's Hospital. Pour on the fun. Atlantis, we pour on the fun. Hard water stains are the toughest stains in toilet bowls, and I ought to know it's my job to clean them. So I use Snowball Toilet Bowl Cleaner. Snowball is 50% stronger than Lysol or Vanish, so it powers out even the toughest hard water stains better, faster. Take it from a pro. You want to finish a tough job better, faster? Use Snowball. It's the Toilet Bowl Cleaner with real muscle. Snowball and Snowdrops are available now at these fine stores. Nikki's 16 and a high school student. Elaine is a homegrown beauty from Pennsylvania. They're L Cover Girls, and we'll tell you the secrets behind the number one foreign fashion magazine in the U.S. Generally, it's a lot of schlepping around. And while getting a cover can make a model's career, it can also make or break a magazine's future. The cover models have a lot to do with the newsstand sales. L Cover Girls, the inside stories only on Entertainment Tonight. Entertainment Tonight, weeknights at 7.30, only on Channel 4. 
With so many reasons for a second pair of glasses, you'll be glad DOC is saying too. Two pair of glasses or contacts, that is. Right now, when you purchase prescription glasses or contacts, you'll get another pair absolutely free. Bob's glad he said to. Say two. Lori's glad she said to. Two. Don't love your new glasses? Bring them back for a full refund. Come to DOC. You'll be glad you said to. You have my word on it. You could use a crystal ball, although reliability is questionable. Tea leaves, there's an idea. A little messy, though, huh? Your horoscope, good thinking. Let's see, a domestic tranquility upset by surprise addition. Unfortunately, these things can be misleading. Floyd! My mother's coming to stay with us! When your number's up, there's only one way to make sure you'll be the first to know. The Lotto Drawing, live, Saturday nights at 11, only on Channel 4. From your 24-hour news source, Channel 4 News continues. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what's going on in the world of sports today? Well, the man in the know, Tony Segreto, standing by in our Miami newsroom. What is going on, Tone? Kel, maybe you were thinking that. We know, because we're in sports, or we think we know. Anyway, coming up in sports at 5.30, Detroit's Tiger Stadium, sold for the low, low price of two bucks. Do you believe that? And a look at just who will line up next to John Offord all this season. It's been a different player most every year, the last couple. We will examine that as we talk about sports coming up in, oh, 25 minutes or so. Kelly, back to you. All right, Tony, thanks. Bob? Okay, sports fans, there's a new game in town when it comes to six-packs. Listen up. They are called Tear Tabs, a new kind of six-pack carrier which breaks down in sunlight, and it's got to be torn apart by the user. Even celebrities like them. Now, I've never done this before, so <laughs> if I can do it, all of America can do it. Here you have a three-pack of beer. You pull the tab like so, and oh, my gosh. Oh, that's awfully easy, isn't it? <laughs> but Hank says the real joke is that only one company uses the new tabs. Comedian Billy Crystal is laughing tonight. He's finally joined many of the celebrities he loves to mimic, getting a star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame. It's number 1934 on the famous walkway. And just in case you didn't know, celebrities do pay for those stars. And the rumored price is no laughing matter. Hmm, didn't know that. Scanning the skies with our satellite, we came across home videos of people's pets. We've all shot those kind of videos. From piano playing pups to crazy cats, they are perfectly silly. See your, or grandma. No, not me. Yeah, Mom, say hi. Bye. Bye, Mr. Ostrich. Hey, you can't have the soda water. <laughs> no. Happy birthday, dear She was born on Christmas Eve, and um, she plays the piano quite well. Happens to be my dog, and I would like for you to meet her and hear her play. Mozart, bass clap. Bass clap. Very good. Upper clap. Down to Mozart. Mozart. A little bit of Beethoven. Beethoven. A little further down. Beethoven. A little more Mozart. Mozart. Now, does your dog do anything silly? Uh, not quite that silly. Although I did like the dog that sang the Cheers theme song. Oh it was yeah, cute. sang it right. We had a we had a Labrador Retriever who, every time he'd go up the steps, when he'd reach the third step from the top, he had gas. Every time, and it was always the third step. It's a strange dog. Okay, well with that we uh, wrap up our first look at five, and thank you for joining us. <laughs> Stay tuned. The Channel Four News at five thirty is up next. Third from Fort Lauderdale and Miami, this is Channel 4 News at 5.30 with Steve Abrams in Fort Lauderdale, Teresa Rodriguez in Miami, meteorologist Brian Norcross in the Storm Center, Tony Segreto Sports, and the Channel 4 News team. Good evening from Fort Lauderdale. And good evening from Miami. I'm Ed Odell sitting in for Teresa Rodriguez, who's filling in on NBC News at sunrise all this week. Looking at the top stories in this half hour of the Channel 4 News, Congress and President Bush square off on civil rights. We'll have a live report. 
Plus, a convicted sex killer fights for his life in a Fort Lauderdale courtroom. And the miracle birth of a deer, born quite literally by accident. Now our top story, controversy over civil rights legislation now under consideration in Congress. Channel 4's Steve Handelsman joins us now to sort out the battle. And here at the U.S. Capitol, at the House of Representatives, they are still debating at this hour, and if they vote at all tonight, it won't be for a couple of hours. There is no question that the Democrats' version of a civil rights bill will pass. The question is by how much. Democrats need 290 votes to make their bill absolutely veto-proof. But by most counts here this afternoon, they don't have them. Before debate began, House Democrats knew their plan to protect their bill from a Bush veto was in trouble. Their leader, Tom Foley, all but conceded they were falling short. This is the beginning of the process, not the end. Foley is frustrated by White House tactics. President Bush cannot get his own bill passed, but he's weakened support for the Democrats' version by insisting it would lead to employment quotas. Democrats are furious. The politics of division, the politics of race, the politics of fear. Democrats deny their bill would make it so much easier to win big cash awards in suits over racism that employers would have to hire by quotas in self-defense. This is not a quota bill. It specifically outlaws quotas. Debate was angry. Many members looking ahead to how the issue could help or hurt them in the 92 elections. It's the first time in the civil rights era that an administration has tried to divide Americans on the basis of race in order to score points in a political campaign. In the end, when its complexities are understood at the employment offices of countless factories and businesses, it will not have the support of the American people but their resentment and their indignation. Even before the House vote, moderate Republican senators proposed a compromise plan. And Democrats here on the House side hope that even if they fall short in the vote here, that once a compromise bill is pounded out and passes the Senate, that there will be enough votes to make the Democrats' civil rights bill veto-proof. Reporting live from the U.S. Capitol, this is Steve Handelsman, Channel 4 News. Ed? Thanks, Steve Handelsman, reporting live from Washington. A convicted killer who Broward prosecutors call a career criminal has been spared from the electric chair. Instead, 29-year-old Roland Menzies has been sentenced to life in prison. Roland Menzies has a long history of violent crime. At 13 years of age, he was convicted of manslaughter in the beating death of a four-year-old Davy boy. After that came a series of convictions on everything from drugs to burglary. And then in December of 1989, Menzies met 49-year-old Richard Kubik at a West Broward adult bookstore. They left together, and while they were having sex, Kubik was killed as a result of eight stab wounds to the neck. For that, Menzies will spend at least the next 25 years in prison. The court judges, uh, judges you, Mr. Menzies, that you are guilty of the crime of first-degree murder. It's a sentence of this court that you be committed to the Department of Corrections for your natural life without possibility of parole for 25 calendar years. Menzies and his family were visibly relieved at the news that he won't be going to Florida's electric chair. It took the jury just four hours to decide his fate and only minutes for the judge to accept its recommendation. Attorneys for Menzies claimed through the trial their client was only protecting himself, that he was just trying to defend himself when Kubik began choking him. Prosecutors, however, said it had nothing to do with self-defense. They said it was a clear case of premeditated murder. A South Dade man arrested on prostitution charges after posing as a patient who wanted a physical examination. Police say a Howard Harlan called a doctor to his house. While she examined him, he masturbated, then offered the doctor money if she'd visit him again. The doctor called police, who sent an officer posing as a physician. Authorities say the same thing happened again. Harlan's charged with offering to commit prostitution. A student and a teacher's aide exchanged gunfire at an adult education class in Daytona Beach. Both pulled guns after fighting over a can of soda. Student John Harris apparently became enraged when teacher's aide Kevin McCreary took away his soda. Harris is in serious condition. McCreary was treated for an abdomen wound. An eighth grader in Syracuse, New York, was suspended after school officials found drugs in his locker. But reporter Jim Axelrod tells us you may be surprised to hear what drug was found. Jason Monto is home from school today with his channel changer in hand, serving out his three-day suspension. Jason is an eighth grader at the Lincourt School, where he was caught with Nuprint, a common pain reliever. 
something plainly forbidden in the school handbook. Did you know it was against school rules? Yeah, partly. But I didn't think that it would, they would go this far with the, what they do to me. Jason Monto's father can't believe how far they've gone. The suspension, plus Jason is barred from next weekend's class trip to Niagara Falls. Too stiff, says James Monto, for a kid who's never been big trouble. Average kid in school with average problems. Never anything serious. On page 17 of the Lincourt Handbook, the penalty for having something like Nuprin is spelled out. It's considered a drug. Page 17 also lists the penalties for stealing and carrying a dangerous weapon, and both are lighter. Suspensions for less time on the second offense. Does that seem right? That's a question I wanted to ask Dr. Gloria Birmingham. She's the principal here and the district superintendent. But she wouldn't talk to me, except to say discipline cases are confidential and not discussed. So no explanation of the policy. No chance to find out if she thinks the punishment fits the crime. And no chance to ask Dr. Birmingham what she thinks this is going to make Jason Monto feel like about coming back to school here. I don't feel like going back and then having people thinking like... I had drugs in my locker. And then... James Monto will be at the next Lincourt School Board meeting Tuesday night to complain about the three days of TV time he'd prefer his kid didn't have. That was Jim Axelrod reporting from Syracuse. A fight is brewing over NASA's planned space station, Freedom. Administration officials warned today that killing the project would place the entire space program in, quote, great jeopardy. Yesterday, the House Appropriations Committee deleted the $2 billion earmarked for the space station from next year's budget. Space station supporters will try to get funding restored when the issue is debated on the House floor Thursday. Another possible glitch could delay the launch of the space shuttle Columbia for yet a third time. It was supposed to go up tomorrow until engineers found loose insulation on the shuttle's external fuel tank. Workers glued down the pieces and they say they think everything's okay now unless there's another part problem, and if the weather holds out, the shuttle should be ready to go tomorrow morning. It's going to cost you more to get to Disney World this summer, but it's not the theme park that's raising its prices. Highway officials are raising the tolls again on the Florida Turnpike. The penny a mile increase takes effect July 1st and is expected to generate more than $8 million this year. In Earth News tonight, a big controversy over boats that take a toll on South Florida's manatee population. Many boaters are mad about new speed limits in Biscayne Bay. Environmental reporter Nick Bogert is at the Metro Commission right now where all this is being fought out. Nick? Steve, a decision just a couple of minutes ago, and in fact those boating interests are still mad, and those who would protect the manatee, the environmental forces, are quite happy with what happened here. The two sides have been waiting for hours here at the county commission to express their views, the manatees versus the men at sea, and the big question, is Biscayne Bay big enough for both of them? Boats and manatees meet each other a lot in South Florida waters, and it's one reason why manatees are an endangered species. 95% of the manatees that we have studied do have uh, some sort of uh, scars or some sort of, uh, they've had collisions with boats. The county studies manatee movements all the time and used its info to draw up a new protection plan. There are a few no-wake zones to protect manatees now. They're the little white patches on this map. But the new county plan would add slow zones throughout Biscayne Bay, top speed just eight miles an hour, and a no-boating-at-all zone near Virginia Key. Boaters are all revved up in opposition to that plan. There would be no recreational boating as we know it today in North Biscayne Bay. Uh, they're telling me uh, I can't go fast in the bay and, and speed is in my blood. Boaters argued the county plan would pretty much wipe out water skiing and would make bay travel times impossibly slow. But environmental groups argued that with only 1,500 manatees left in all Florida, they need all the help they can get. There are some of us who, who do not boat, who instead look at the bay as a marine park, and we enjoy the wildlife that lives there, and knowing that they are protected. Some boaters pitched a compromise. Looser regulations in summer when most boaters are out, and tighter rules in the winter when sea cows need the most help. The fact of the matter is, is the manatees are winter residents like the tourists are. But just a few moments ago, the county commission rejected that idea of some sort of seasonal compromise, went ahead with the very tough manatee protection plan. A lot of the boaters are not pleased. They will have one more forum. The governor and cabinet have to consider all this, either in July or September. But so far, Stephen Ed, the cabinet has been very tough on these manatee protection rules in other counties. So maybe not much hope for the boaters there. Back to you. Yeah, Nick, uh, bad news for the boaters, obviously. Are you still with me, Nick? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, another, another option they were, they were looking at apparently had to do with setting up a private sanctuary for the manatees. Was that given any serious concern? 
consideration here? No, the manatees really are all over uh, the Biscayne Bay, and there's really no way you can segregate them other than, I suppose, fencing off, but that really would not be allowable under Endangered Species Protection Act. Also earlier this week, we heard some boaters talk about the fact that people from Fort Lauderdale like to bring their boats down south because you can go fast down there. I guess that's all over. Yeah, the wide open bay. Well, it will be if the cabinet uh, approves these rules, and, and Broward County is going to have some new manatee rules that the cabinet will take up later on, and, uh, later on this year. Exactly. All right. Thank you very much, Nick. Still to come tonight, a gift for Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. She is being presented with the house she already owns, and we'll explain in a minute. Plus, the miraculous birth of a baby deer thrown from her mother in a car accident. And at six, nuclear experts consider the safety of Cuba's nuclear power industry. I'm finally eating a hero, thanks to Super Polygrip with its new Ultra Hole formula. Now holds dentures ultra tight, stronger and longer than ever. New Ultra Hold Formula, the best grip Polygrip has ever made. What's different about Polyden? Mmm, <sighs> refreshing mint. There's a minty mouthwash ingredient in every tablet. Other cleansers may get dentures clean, but Polyden gets the minty fresh clean. Super strength, super minty, Polyden. As cars get older, they may need higher and higher octane to perform like they used to. But there is a gasoline specially formulated to control this higher octane need while providing the highest level of engine cleanliness. Texaco System You get great performance in every octane grade. Still think all gasolines are the same? You take so much care to eat foods that are natural. Consider that the next time you drink decaffeinated coffee. Sanka is decaffeinated by a remarkable natural process. Using only pure water and nature's effervescence to wash away caffeine. With no artificial chemicals. That's why it's natural to drink Sanka. Sanka ground decaffeinated coffee. Domino's Pizza delivers in 30 minutes or less. None of the rest are always this hot, this fresh. Call Domino's tonight for this hot deal. A medium with all the toppings you want, just $8.99. Another one, only $4 more. So call Domino's Pizza now. JCPenney Summer Sale for ladies only. Save 25 to 40% on all swimwear, French Navy casual separates, junior shorts, and knit tops at JCPenney. <laughs> Mama's little girl is all grown up, and she's a porno star. She has some excellent acting talent. This mom even paid for her daughter's breast implants, hoping they would give her career a rise. That's my baby. A Current Affair, weekdays at 7, following NBC Nightly News, only on Channel 4. Win two free tickets to Whitney Houston's I'm Your Baby Tonight concert. Just watch Entertainment Tonight at 7.30. If you correctly name the video, you could win. Brought to you by these sponsors. From your 24-hour news source, Channel 4 News continues. South Florida's leading environmentalist, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, is getting a present from the state, the house she already owns. The Land Trust of Dade County is going to buy the Coconut Grove home and preserve it. Then they'll return it to the 101-year-old Douglas as a gift. A baby loggerhead turtle was stolen overnight from the Rosenstill School on Virginia Key. The kidnappers apparently broke into the pen where turtles are kept and took the two-year-old loggerhead, which was born and raised at the school. Steve? And by the way, for any kids out there who would like an up-close look at sea turtles, this is your chance. The Discovery Center of Fort Lauderdale is organizing Moonlight Turtle Walks beginning tonight. It is a three-month program to teach kids all about sea turtles. It could be at least another day or so before swimmers are allowed back in the intracoastal waterway between Riviera Beach and Boynton Beach. Officials say at least 30,000 gallons of sewage was released into the water from a broken pipe near Mar-a-Lago yesterday. The leak has been stopped, but possible health risks remain. In neighborhood news, an update on a story Channel 4 told you about last week. Coral Springs High students will ask City Commissioner Donald Sanders to resign at tonight's meeting. Sanders was arrested during the Memorial Day weekend for driving under the influence. Students say he sets a poor example. And at the moment we are, uh, I'm sorry, we're going to a break, I guess, are we? All right, we'll be back after this.
This weight loss program offers a solution you can live with, total flexibility and savings. I love it, and I feel great. I lost 56 pounds eating three good meals a day. I could eat at restaurants, even fast food outlets. I like the flexibility. I even saved money. I lost weight, but my grocery bill stayed the same. Lose all the weight you can with a low service fee. Only $11 a week at Doctors Weight Loss Centers. Call 1-800-940-SLIM. One radio station really is different. South Florida's Coast, 97.3 FM. Only the best of the 70s, 80s, and today. All in 25-minute sets and no talking over the music, ever. No contests, no silly DJ chatter, and Coast always tells you the songs they play. Turn on South Florida's Coast, 97.3 FM. You'll love the difference. Want air on Ford Mustang or Ranger at no extra charge? Don't sweat it. You've got it during your South Florida Ford Dealers Spring Savings Celebration. Out to get a real steal on a sporty Mustang or Ranger loaded with value. Don't sweat it. You've got it right now. Mustang sticker price minus customer cash is ten three seventy seven, And you can save over $3,100 on Ranger, both with air at no extra charge. That's right, air at no extra charge. Your choice. It's a limited time offer you won't want to miss. See your South Florida Ford Dealers and don't sweat it. KFC introduces a whole new kind of fried chicken. New Light and Crispy. Give it, give it, New Light and Crispy from KFC. No skin, so it's light. All taste because it's marinated with 11 herbs and spices. Nobody's cooking like KFC. Drop into KFC right now, and you can feed a lot of people for a little money. Get 12 pieces of delicious new Light and Crispy chicken for just $9.99 plus tax. J.C. Penney semi-annual lingerie sale. Save 25% on all nice and spicy Fantasia, Adana, underscore, and body lights, bras, briefs, and bikinis at J.C. Penney. From your 24-hour news source, Channel 4 News continues. And time now to check in with Channel 4's weather dude, Brian Allen, who is standing by. Brian, uh, we have some, some fantastic storm cells moving through uh, Fort Lauderdale tonight. About half an hour ago, a storm moved through and just dropped sheets of rainfall. What's it like down sheets there? Sheets of rain. Okay, sheets well, of rain. what we're talking about right now is for Fort Lauderdale. Until 6 o'clock tonight, there's a severe thunderstorm warning for the northeastern corner of Broward County. And there's also a, a marine advisory for the lower and middle keys until 6 o'clock as well. Just some heavy downpours. So let's go ahead and take a look outside right now and show you what's going on as far as the numbers go. Currently in Fort Lauderdale, 94 degrees, humidity 44%, winds out of the southwest at 12. Miami International, 93 degrees, humidity at 44%, winds out of the south at 5. As far as air quality for today, Broward 45 and good. And then we've got Dade, good at 31. Let's go ahead and check in with our neighborhood weather watchers right now. Here you go, Deerfield Island, 82 degrees, cloudy now. Sunrise earlier, 95, it's only 80 there now. And Stephanie, our weather watcher, says it's pouring. Hollywood bacon up there, 94 degrees. Now then, as far as what's going on in Dade County, Miami Springs, 91, a trace earlier. Cutler Ridge, 95, really hot. 86 degrees, a few clouds around Fruit and Spice Park. And for the Keys, Key Largo, 88 degrees and sunny. Almorada, 90 with some blue skies. And Key West, dark out west, 85. That's because we had some thunderstorms start to move through. We're taking the radar shot now for you out of Miami. And you can just see right here a little bit of yellow right there in the T for Fort Lauderdale. That's what's left of the cell. It's moving to the east. Basically, we're talking about Lauderdale, also Pompano Beach, Deerfield Beach, and then back down to about Port Everglades. And we see some more right there around Palm Beach County. The Keys right here is let up a little bit. We don't see any of the yellow or orange in there, but this is where the marine advisory is. A couple of water spouts spouted through there. Now then, as far as the satellite loop, we can watch all this happen for us as we start to roll this. See everything starting to blow up, but still around the coast, they're on the eastern coast, they're still seeing some pretty good thunderstorms develop, and once again, some pretty good thunderstorms way out here in the Gulf, but doing nothing. And you can just see that moisture start to move on up with those southerly and southwest winds. Now then, as far as our forecast goes in detail, here it is for the boaters tomorrow. Winds out of the west to southwest, 5, 15 to 20 actually. Seas two feet near shore, and as you move out into the Gulf Stream, about six feet. Bay is a moderate shot. The surf temperature down a couple of degrees to 81. For tonight, some passing showers, a low of 75. Tomorrow, some sunshine once again, more thunderstorms expected, a high of 91 degrees. And your four more days, thunderstorms all the way through the period, 90, 89, 89, and 91. So it's still going to be warm and humid 
which breeds thunderstorms. Steve? It's only, it's only Tuesday and you're wrecking our weekend. I'm sorry. I know you got big boating plans, but <laughs> I'm going to get you this you're, time. You're coming along on that, aren't you? Uh, to, I don't think so. To reef sweep? You're not going to do uh, that? I don't think. I've got to work on Saturday. Otherwise, I'd the, be out there with you. I'll get you the time off. Okay, thanks. We'll, we'll talk to you. All right, so it's raining under the tea in Fort Lauderdale right now. That's right. You betcha. All right. Thank you very much, Brian. Ed? Updating top stories in the Channel 4 News tonight. The Lost Squadron is still not found. Explorers say the planes discovered off Fort Lauderdale are not the Avengers that disappeared in 1945. Japan's Mount Unzu still spewing ash and red-hot lava. 32 people have been killed. Hundreds are seeking shelter. And members of the American Nuclear Society react to two Cuban defectors who say a reactor under construction in Cienfuegos, Cuba, isn't safe. Details on this story coming up on the Channel 4 News at 6. Well, now it's time for sports. Tony Segretto's back. Looks like we got some problems back there at linebacker at the Dolphin camp, huh? Yeah, we're going to talk about who's going to fill that slot next to John Offerdahl. But before we get to that, Ed, let me tell you, there was another injury at the Dolphins mini camp today. Number one draft pick Randall Hill went down with an injured hamstring. We'll have much more on this at 6 o'clock. Now about that linebacker situation. Certainly one of the big questions this year is who will line up next to John Offerdahl. In the past, names like Jackie Ship, remember that name? Cliff Odom last year, Barry Krause the year before that. Who will it be this year? Well, Ned Smith has a list of candidates. Ned? It's still early, but already you can see competition is heating up at one inside linebacker position. Five-time Pro Bowler John Offerdahl is a lock at one spot, but any one of five other players could start beside him this season. You know, I think linebacking and inside linebacking has been pretty uh, pretty much the strength of our team, a defensive team, the last couple of years. So whenever you get new guys in here trying to make the team, it just adds that much more competition. John Grimsley, who the Dolphins acquired from Houston in a trade, is trying to find a new home with the Dolphins' starting unit. It's a real learning process right now for me, trying to uh, learn all the different plays and all the different uh, terminology. And, you know, it's it's coming along. Knee injuries have slowed the progress of both Barry Krause and Plan B acquisition Ned Bokar, but both plan to be in the hunt. These guys here, uh, they've always been good, and they're going to be consistently good. My job is to play a little bit better, and with youth on my side, hopefully that pays off in the long run. All these linebackers know the competition is already fierce, and it'll pick up even more so when Cliff Oldham comes off his injury. Actually, it is nice to have one person that you know you're going to be playing with, but at this time of the year, you know, you want to get comfortable with all the players. With competition only making everyone better, naming a starter will probably not be done until well into the preseason schedule. In Miami, Ned Smith, Channel 4 Sports. I'll tell you one thing, the Dolphin coaches are really, really impressed with John Grimsley. All right, let's switch gears just a little bit. Two dollars won't buy you much these days, as you well know. Oh, I think you can still get a Big Mac and fries, uh, right? I think so, right, Steve? My photographer, Steve, you can get Big Mac and fries for two bucks, right? I think you can get a slice of pizza. You can rent a movie for two dollars. But I'll tell you what, in Detroit, two bucks will even buy you a baseball stadium. No kidding. David Mahalov, I'm the one that bought Tiger Stadium for two dollars. Oh, yeah? Well, you going to be my boss? Yeah! <laughs> Hard to believe, but David Mahalab owns Tiger Stadium. Well, he sent the city a check last week for two bucks, and the city cashed it. Seems like a match made in heaven, doesn't it? Should the stadium be called Mahalab Field? The Tigers think not. Now, I wonder how much the Orange Bowl would sell for. Certainly more than two dollars, but you don't really believe that Mr. Mahalab owns Tiger Stadium, do you? Or do you? Ed and Steve, back to you. <laughs> you said he does. It must be true. Still to come, an amazing story of survival. A baby deer born after being thrown from her mother's womb. This morning, as guests at the five-star Arizona Biltmore are tempted to breakfast, the fine-brewed coffee usually served has been secretly switched to Folgers Crystals. Does it have the fresh-brewed taste and aroma these guests yeah, expect? They were just sort of waft me out of bed. It tastes like fresh ground beans. It would help wake us up. And get us better. going. It's Folgers Crystals. I would have thought it was brewed. Is the word elegant? Can that be used for coffee? Mountain-grown Folgers Crystals. Coffee rich enough to be served in America's finest restaurants. And I'll drink the bath. Chris Everett discusses her weakness. It's not tennis. It's eating. I love rich, creamy foods. But now this isn't a weakness. It's healthy eating, thanks to Kraft. Kraft introduces Eating Right frozen entrees. Rich, creamy recipes now lower in fat, cholesterol, sodium, and calories. Weakness? Not anymore. New Kraft Eating Right entrees. Kraft makes eating right. Delicious. Introducing the Pizza Hut Early Bird. Not just pizza.
six super early bird meals, six super early bird deals, a supreme sandwich, ham and cheese sandwich, spaghetti and meat sauce, all you can eat salad bar, a choice of pizza dinners, all served with drinks from two to five. It's Broadway's biggest show ever, the Tony Award-winning best musical, Jerome Robbins Broadway. New York, a hell of a time. The one that gives you nine hit shows for one hot ticket. Jerome Robbins Broadway. There'll never be anything like it again. The final week. Call Ticketmaster now. When you're buying or selling real estate, make sure you enter the world of buy owner. I sold my home in less than six weeks, got the price I wanted, and saved over $6,000. Thanks, buy owner. They do make a difference. We sold an apartment in two weeks. Thank you, buy owner. It was really easy. We sold our house in three months and saved over $6,000. Thanks, buy owner. With buy owner, it's you that makes a difference. Call now. From your 24-hour news source, Channel 4 News continues. And just before we go tonight, the story of a baby fawn whose birth was, in a word, miraculous. Reporter Linda Brill tells us the little deer came into this world literally by accident. Something of a miracle is waking up inside this Olympic Peninsula cottage. Come on, honey. Mama got bottle. A tiny fawn, no bigger than a cat with long legs was an orphan until she found a new adoptive mother. Yes, sir, Glado. 